Haunted trinkets, paraphernalia, and occult things have always interested me. But will it become my curse? I was one of those kids who grew up waiting for the ghost houses at Halloween to open, and movies of scary creatures and cursed dolls enthralled me. No wonder I wanted to collect things with a history of paranormal activity. But I had never had the chance until recently. I saw a doll in the Facebook marketplace more by chance than anything. The doll was named Margot and had no history attached to it. It was just an old porcelain doll from the late 1800s as a collectible. She was made from quality white porcelain and had natural blonde human hair and the original blue glass eyes that were very unusual for that time. Without any paranormal history, she still fascinated me. She was a perfect choice. Little did I know what was to come. Two days later, UPS dropped a box at my door. When I opened the box, I found Margot carefully packaged in bubble wrap to prevent any damage in shipping. When I unwrapped her, I shrieked in delight. She was beautiful. She was more beautiful than the pictures online. I was thrilled to have her in my new collection. Secretly, I was anxious to see if she possessed any spirit, as many of these antique dolls do. I had no idea how deep miseries I had gotten myself into. I placed Margot on an antique dressing table from the same era as she was in my bedroom. I continued my activities as routine, and the day passed uneventfully. The night passed the same. I came home and cooked dinner, did a load of laundry, took a bath and prepared for bed. My typical weekday evening. Morning came, and I awoke as usual at sunrise, and my day continued along its typical path. The second night I went to bed at my usual time. However, on this night everything changed. It started with an unusual banging noise, as my apartment had quiet neighbors. However, I concluded it still had to be the neighbors having some disagreement. I turned over and paid no attention. I drifted back to sleep and slept soundly. The following morning I opened my eyes to Margot sitting on the edge of the dressing table with her legs crossed. I sat bolt upright. I hadn't left her on the table's edge. I had set her back against the mirror, and I certainly didn't cross her legs. I had left her with her legs spread straight out before her. I dressed and hurried off to work. My mind was berserk with questions. I couldn't focus or concentrate during my entire shift. After work, I went directly home to investigate. When I entered the bedroom, Margot sat back against the mirror, similar to how I had placed her the first night. Her legs uncrossed, sitting back, not on the edge anymore. I didn't do it, and no one had been in the house all day. Was I hallucinating or losing my mind? Bedtime rolled around, and I checked on Margot and set my alarm. The alarm rang at seven as I had set it. I rose on my elbow and looked at the table where Margot was sitting at bedtime. To my disbelief, she was gone. I got out of bed and looked around the room. Margot wasn't to be seen. I got on my hands and knees and looked under the bed, and she wasn't there either. While I dressed, I was utterly bewildered. After washing and dressing, I went to make my bed, and when I pulled the bed sheet back, Margot was lying on her back looking towards the ceiling. I ran from the house. Having slept with that cursed doll in my bed is a chilling nightmare. I called the woman who sold me the doll, and she said no returns. It was my job now to find Margot a new family. Can other doll spirits keep a cursed doll in line? As a child growing up, I wasn't into dolls. But because I was a girl, I was given them as birthday and Christmas presents. And because I had a shelf in my room where I placed them carefully, everyone thought I loved and collected them, so they gave me more. I never played with them. I was just too shy to say I didn't want dolls. I'd prefer a race car set or the trains my brother got. For no particular reason, my aunt gave me an antique porcelain doll one day. It was unexpected and not a birthday or special day or anything. She brought it over and said it reminded her of me, so she bought it at a garage sale. I was eight at the time. It made me happy that my aunt had thought of me. I took the doll after everyone oohed and awed and said how pretty she was, and took her up to my room, where I set her in a child chair that was placed near the shelves with my doll collection. The doll was beautifully dressed. She wore a pink dress with elaborate lace with ruffled stitchwork. On her head, a wonderful bonnet in the same beautiful pink decorated with ruffles and beads tied under her chin with a soft pink ribbon. On her feet, 
pink slippers. She was beautifully dressed. Her body was made from a satin material stuffed with cotton, giving her a softness to hold. Her arms and legs were of porcelain, and she had the most delicate porcelain face with eyes on rockers to open and close. Her hair was blonde and made from natural human hair. My aunt said she was just like me. I named her Lucy. Since the moment Lucy entered our house, mysterious things began to happen. I was always uncomfortable with Lucy. She seemed to possess energy I could not explain. I was cautious about touching her and seldom if ever moved her from her chair. When I played in my room, it was as if she was watching me. It didn't bother me because it wasn't in any kind of evil way, just an attentive manner. I recall feeling that if I did something wrong, she would tell on me. I don't know how she would do this, but I thought she would and could. How totally ridiculous does that sound? Even to me as a child, it sounded far-fetched. The first paranormal occurrence that I can remember was when I was playing dress-up in my room. I had just put on a fabulous fashion and was looking in the mirror when out of the blue my Christmas box started to play. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. It wasn't a few notes, but as if it had been fully wound. And that was impossible because I hadn't wound it in months, and the play button was left off when I had last put it on the shelf. Then, just as fast as it had started, it abruptly stopped. I looked under the box, and the on and off were in the off position. It had not wound down. It stopped as if someone had turned the switch off. I was terrified. How could this be? I never mentioned this to my parents. They didn't believe me when I told them I saw an apparition in the hallway one night. They certainly will not accept a spirit wound up in my Christmas music box and playing with it. So I just let it pass. The next thing that happened went on for years. It was a whispered voice of a child. Come play with me. It persisted for several nights and then stopped for months. It was on and off again like this for years. I would be asleep and the whisper came close to my ear in the middle of the night and always the same. Come play with me. At first I'd jump up and shout, who are you? I'd look around the room in the dark and no one was there. Then one night she answered me in her soft whisper, it's me, Lucy. I was less afraid after that. The subsequent happenings began after weeks of nothing. It was my little brother who was afflicted with the same whispers. My final straw to get Lucy out of my room was a night when I woke to see Lucy rocking back and forth in her chair. And in a whisper she sang, You're a shooting star in the sky. This part frightened me the most. Her head turned to the side at an angle unnatural for a human. And the music box on the shelf began to play its Christmas tune. Lucy turned back to meet my shocked expression and smiled wickedly. It is why I dislike dolls to this day. I could not throw Lucy away, so I placed her in a black plastic storage bin in my closet under another bin of old clothes. Lucy is still there. My brother and I are grown and have moved from our parents' house, but Lucy has remained. Our father and mother experience Lucy at strange times and without warning. Little things turn up in unexpected places. Rings are stolen and found later in odd places. Mother would go to my room and find dolls off the shelf and the smell of perfume from my perfume collection wafting in the air. I think over time, other dolls in my collection exhibited spirits that keep the antics of Lucy in line, and she doesn't present a danger to anyone. What nightmares can a cursed marionette conjure? As a gift on my fifth birthday, I received a marionette. It was nearly as tall as me. I would stand on the counter with a shower curtain strung on a line across the kitchen and present shows to an audience at the breakfast room table. Sometimes I had people in my audience, sometimes it was my stuffed animals. At night, all my stuffed animals sleep on the top bunk. Special animals had particular locations because they were my favorites. My marionette is hung from the bedpost, so the strings don't get twisted. Sometimes he scares me at night. I see his silhouette in the window light and I think a man is in the room. A few months after my birthday, I started having really chilling nightmares. Not the typical nightmares kids have, but very true to life and explicit. They were brutal men who would break into our house. They were harrowing dreams where these disgusting men did abhorrent things to my big sister, and I was forced to watch. They would torture her with hot pokers and cut her with black knives. She would scream in pain and torment. After a few nights of this, I told my parents about my nightmares and that I always saw the marionette laughing. 
My mother said we must take the marionette out of my room and out of the house, and the nightmares will go away. I agreed he was cursed and was haunting me. In reality, my mother took the marionette and put it in the attic chest out of sight and out of mind, to save it for me when I was a little older. A month later, after a terrible thunderstorm overnight, I found all my stuffed animals scattered on the floor. A night later, my big sister had a chilling nightmare that was tantamount to the nightmares I had experienced. The strange thing is I never told my sister about my demons, and I'm sure my parents hadn't told her about my nightmares. Her nightmare was so indistinguishable from my nightmare that my mother blamed me for telling my sister such horrible stories. I did not. That evening, my mother went into the attic chest. She took the marionette and put it in the garbage can to get rid of the cursed doll forever. Still, after a nighttime storm, we would find our things in places we hadn't put them without an explanation. This happened for years. When I was 14, I was rummaging around in the basement. Surprisingly, I found the marionette in a box of old toys. I confronted my mother, and she said she threw him in the trash. Dad must have retrieved it from the garbage and taken it to the basement, but Dad denies rescuing the doll. 